qualifier teams, correct? Except for Dios and Flying Matt, depending on where they place. Okay. They were previously a oh, qualifier not, team. Yeah, yeah, technically not a yeah. qualifier this week. But came, we originally found them through our qualifiers, yeah, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, like you said, until, until last week, they had been a qualifier team. Like last week, they were a qualifier team. Since they won, we invited them back to defend their championship. Mm -hmm. and they're here. But yeah, all of our teams from last week and now into this week have either been or are qualifier teams in the top four. And if, like Landon said, if you guys are a viewer at home and you're watching this saying, hey, I think I could do this, or hey, I think I could beat these guys, the qualifiers are literally free. You can literally join the website right now, join the qualifiers, and yeah. play in these exact same tournaments for the exact same amount of money. So tons of opportunity there. Absolutely. Well, it looks like it is going to be finals time loading in here for our first map of the two as we're going to be spectating to see exactly how these teams can start off their finals run. One thing that's always interesting to add, Ryan, is that obviously being you know a, a player, being a coach especially, it's always interesting to know the difference between a regular game and what a grand finals means. The intensity gets raised up. Obviously from your experience on being in the main stage, being in situations like that, how different is a grand final compared to a regular match that you have in a tournament? Yeah, yeah. A Honestly, it seems to exponentiate. The, the nerves are higher, the pressure's higher. Obviously you're playing at that point for the, the highest amount of money possible, you know, if it's a high dollar tournament. Yeah. And so really that that's where, you know, that it's it's cliche that, that literally where champions are made, right? Like that yeah. that's where you everything you do up to that point, if you don't win that championship, everything you do up to that point, sure, it's it's impressive. Sure, you know, you, you give it a good effort, but at the end of the day, like you're here to win, right? Yeah. Everyone's here for first place. No no one's here to, to get like second, third, fourth, right? You're here to win. And so uh, this is where you got to put all on the line. You can – the championship finals is everything. I got balloons, I got balloons, I got And I can tell you pretty much every single team who's won these prior weeks, right? I can tell you Fighter and Prism won week number one. I can tell you Alien Assault won week number two. I'll be honest with you, I don't know who got second. I don't know who got third. All I know is the team that won the entire yep. tournament. That's all that anybody hardly remembers. So that, that's, as like I said, where champions are made of, and that's where titles can really start to be produced along with that cash and – Along with those titles and along with that money comes a lot of responsibility and a ton of pressure, like you mentioned there, Ryan. So a lot here for these two teams, and potentially we could be seeing a repeat here from Dios and Flying Mad. And maybe even being in the situation in prior from week number six last week, you could argue they might have a little bit of an advantage when it comes down to knowing how to control those nerves and what it means to be in a match like this. Obviously, like I said, being defending champions. Yeah, I mean they've they've the def, you know it's the definition of the phrase he's in sports, right? They've been here before. Yeah. A lot of times they'll talk about you know veteran teams and, and you know NBA, NFL, whatever, right? Oh, they've been here before. Yeah, they 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 know how to experience this, right? We have a team here who who's literally been here before last week. So looking forward to see kind of how they close it out. Like I said, we might get our first ever back to back champion here. Would be crazy. I'm excited to watch how it all breaks down. I believe we've yet to see a. Uh, a full Elam come from either team, if not, or I think we have actually the, the very beginning. I think we saw a play in Dusty. Regardless, though, it's been a little bit slow, right? It's not as been the as much action filled as we've seen the prior to the prior few games. We've been seeing constant retail row, constant uh, drops and tilt the towers, and the fact that we've seen things now kind of slowly progress up now to the final fifty. It is a pretty interesting aspect of this game, and much like in uh, in very close games, even like in Search and Destroy or in you know, one life type of game modes in certain esports, that final round is where things start to kind of slow down a little bit. You think, hey, my life means a lot. It's not a matter, like if I were to, to die in this situation, it means a lot more because there's actually money on the line and that title is so important as well. So with that in mind, the slower pace to me isn't really a surprising factor, but it's always an interesting one. Yeah, I mean, in Fortnite too, part of the, the, the nature of the game, right, is that at some point you can't play slow anymore, right? The, the zone literally closes in, the map forces itself to be smaller and smaller yeah. and smaller as time goes on. So you can play it as slow as you want in some cases, but towards the end, at one point or another, you, you got to go, right? You, at the end of the day, uh, you, you, know, you don't score points staying alive, you score points with eliminations. That's for sure. It looks like we are going to be seeing a, a nice little team fight go down in Salty Springs for the time, but it will be quickly sought out and very fastly found and as yet again <laughs> rocking out those balloons man i swear the nice. balloons are continuing to be a factor but it looks like on our screens right now we've got dr dios showing that keyboard cam and look at how fast those fingers are moving it's the reason why he's in this tournament in the back-to-back finals as he's going to go ahead and show not just one elim but at least the assistance on the second down it's not in Salty Springs, but just uh, across the way, a little bit toward oh, the uh, yeah. northeastern yeah. side of that in Retail Row. Yeah, yeah, right Seeing lots of grappler play tonight. Which again, there's so much mobility now, you would think that maybe you know players uh, might decide to, to maybe swap out that grappler spot for something else, even with things like balloons coming out. But we see yeah. this player has both the grappler and balloons, right? So <laughs> literally all about the mobility right now. 
I haven't seen quite a few players even use, uh, you know, that mobility, uh, well, that grapple, or even when they're rushing towards Rich certain, uh, yeah. you know, builds, because it's like the ability for you to constantly oh, dodge and kind of, you know, sideswipe around man. certain plays is, is very interesting as well. So that that grappler is... It's so influential when it comes down to a game. Oftentimes, I've seen players even you know put away a rift to go just because that grappler can really get you out of a situation. The, you know, the, the, the amount of time it takes to shake that rift can can sometimes even eliminate you from time to time. And speaking of eliminations, looks like we see one coming from Fatal Fields. Yeah, I think the importance of the grappler actually gets a little bigger in this game format because there's going to be a lot of situations where you go against teams that are maybe up to four, right? And there's a lot of builds coming in like this. Right. You either need to get away, you need to get to the action, whatever it may be, right? So there's, like I said, there's a lot more situations in these type of formats where you need to either get somewhere or get out. And I think the grappler is really, really key for that because of how quickly it does. It does that, I should say. Definitely the case. Mobility being a factor. As it looks like we will see another squad wipe come through here in Fatal Fields. Pawn and Co. are going to be able to find that one. As I want to say, I believe this is Pawn on our screen. As he's now up to four eliminations by himself. So, uh... Pretty interesting to say the least. We haven't really seen Fatal Fields too often, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like we've been uh, pretty much solely in Tilt the Towers and really kind of around the the new locations and are kind of around Pleasant Park as well from time to time. This new little area here in Leaky here, Lake has kind of been where we've been visiting yeah, they're here, they're here, they're here. quite often, but uh, haven't really seen too much play when it comes into Fatal Field. So it's nice to be able to spot the location from time to time. Forgot it existed, right under, to be honest. Right yeah, I mean, it's not that much loot there, and they updated it too with all those bushes, so that can create a little bit of frustration sometimes. And, yeah. Uh, I mean, it, obviously the whole map's changed over time, but Fatal's one one area that's that didn't get changed for the longest time, right? Yeah. They, got, they had Anarchy on the other side they got rid of, but they left Fatal the way it was for quite some time. Some time and they finally gave an update and you know I can see why in a situation like this it, it wouldn't be that advantageous right there's just like I said a yeah. lot of a lot of bushes there's kind of you know the, the grandma's house and there's the the long oh, barn Ooh, that trap was almost scary <laughs> that was about just, a, just as a I was block saying away that, yeah. right yeah um, but yeah no fatal feels like I said probably not the most advantageous especially when you have other areas with so much more loot so much right. more opportunity um, you know so much closer to the hot drops without actually being there so many balloons it's like they're Winnie the Pooh, just flying up in the air, you know, just just hanging out, grabbing a vantage point, go and looking on. And I, it's just so interesting to me that we see, you know, players who literally have the storm at their backside. It doesn't matter. Yet, yeah, it, it really doesn't matter mm -hmm. anymore. Like, it, like it, it's, it's it's an oddity for me to witness and to look at that and for me to not be surprised just because of, of how odd it really is to, to see that particular play style start to come through. So... No, with that in mind, though, having those balloons and having them be so frequent around the map, especially with them recently being introduced, you have the opportunity to move a lot more than you probably prior priorly would. But uh, you know that caller right there? He said, he said they're, they're basically said they're getting there. We got to get there, right? So yeah. they're trying their best to, to try and snake these kills from their opponents. Oh, the rift Ooh. to go! It looks as if it will be Dr. Dios joining alongside this player. Dipping right back in to help out his teammate Flying Matt, who has, happens to be in a pretty awkward spot. Thankfully finds the quick elimination, but the question remains, where is this player who used the rift? Where did he glance to? Where did he go? And he happens to be on just the top of the mountain, rocks the grappler, and it looks as if that grappler could be the, the key factor into walking away with this gunfight. Tries to shake it again, but unfortunately, it does not lead to any success. Thank you for that rift to go, and welcome to the respawn screen, as it will be yet again another Elim for Dios and Co. And they are going to continue on this aggression, stealing that rift and progressing forward on the map. I think they're chasing their opponents now, too. They're trying to decide the routes. Yeah, I'm trying to listen to some of these call-outs right now. They, yeah. they just call out some guys below, so they might be trying to pounce on those two while their opponents are you know, a little far away from them. Well, there's a bush, bottom right of our screen. I, guess, I think that is actually the first bush kill that I've seen in all the Sunday showdown. Which is pretty crazy to think about. Wow. I, I, like, I, I'll be honest, I love the bush, but... How name the last game that you've had the, like the, where you've used the bush? Well, I was Be gonna real. say, I was like, we, earlier we talked about things getting vaulted. How has the bush survived <laughs> every single vaulting so it's far? Iconic. It's got to be just because it's just it's a global oh. icon. As we see the ATK being used, looks like actually a player flew on? out. Is the player still in there? Oh my god, I got Houdini. Was that a Shadowstone player who was driving an <laughs> ATK? That probably can't even happen, but... It is truly spooky season. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Thankfully, though, for Dios, he still walks away with the kill. It was a, an awkward situation. That player maybe just happened to log out, and uh, maybe mom called and cookies are done, so had to hop out of the rift to go and advance toward other things. But, man, how many rift to goes do we have? You can see the confusion on, like, the player's body language, too, <laughs> like, looking up and then quickly turning around, like, wait, what, what just happened? 
Oh, and he actually just spotted another player. Oh my gosh, rocks the bunny hop into a kill here inside of River. My goodness, they are just finding these effortlessly. That's now six for Dr. Dios, and I think three of them have come within the last 30 seconds. You can see they're, they're rocking the, the infamous no-skin strat. Dress, it's yeah. Halloween, dressing up as potatoes, hopefully that you know, they, they get pushed by some of these other teams. Uh, but no, they, there's, they, they seem to be at all the right places at all the right times. Every time they hit a rift, every time they hit, they use one of the balloons, they seem to be falling on some sort of enemy right in front of them, catching them off guard, cleaning up the kill, going on to the next one. Smart strategy, that aggressiveness has to come through. They're, they're using the strategy live. You notice that they've been using balloons and high ramps to, to basically fly over, survey, drop down, go back up, fly over, survey, drop down, and kind of rinse and repeat, which has been a pretty good strategy for them so far. They've gotten a lot of kills that way and sort of be able to reset and quickly go to the next place with this new kind of found mobility in the game. And, you know, priorly when it comes down to the format of how regular Fortnite works, right, it's a matter of, you know, trying to stay alive for that Victor Royale. In this game mode, right, vision is so, so important because you have to try to see as many enemies as you can. It's a matter of spotting more enemies than the opponents and capitalizing on it. So in past, you know, those balloons for regular Fortnite is great because you can kind of see, kind of gauge where the opponents are. Flying Matt actually goes down right now, and we'll see whether or not he can be res in this situation. And it looks like coming from the flank, we'll see whether or not it can be this player who stays up, and it will be a successful venture staying alive. But for how much longer? Like we talked about, that mobility, those balloons, so influential, as you mentioned, Ryan, when it comes down to this particular format, the ability to see opponents is how you win these games. I think we're going to see more and more of that, actually, especially if balloons stay, obviously, and, and this mechanic stays. Just we say oh. that, though, it looks like Dios does go down, so this is a good opportunity now for Pond and the God. To, to basically finish off this game strong, extend their leagues. I do believe they're they're winning. I'm not sure if we can get a score update from production, but I think I think they are winning this. That could be a good opportunity for them to kind of extend that lead oh, and to wow. come into this grand finals game too. As just we say that another kill by kill, I believe. I believe so. And Player just like goes that, down. God goes down, and this Harry is a Potter. big moment for Pond, having three players and in an instant at the get placed down takes the heavy shotgun and lets it rock as i believe his teammate will live to see another day puts the pyramid down just to solidify things but my goodness nine elims for pawn in this game and there are still seven left on the map gives his teammate a chug a chug jug and you're not going to find a, a better teammate than that right gets the res and gives you one of the best items in the entire game Wow, that's that's unbelievable. They stay up in that situation, but what a huge loss that is going to be for the other team. Yeah, no, that was almost our opportunity to maybe kind of stop the bleeding a little bit, right? And but just like that, they could clean the kills up. Are going to further extend the lead, and we might be going into this next game of our grand finals with a pretty significant deficit. Yeah, unfortunately, due to the uh, lack of streams, it is difficult for us to try to add up the score. So, guys, we do apologize for that. We'll have a uh, a summary if the players kind of flash up that scoreboard for us or, or once we head into game number two. But it is fair to say Pawn and God at this point have somewhat of a lead. The question remains is how established is it? But you'd like to imagine with at least nine right now here for Pawn, it's probably looking fairly decent. So, And uh, the fact that they are going to be the only ones alive, that the next seven eliminations is going to be a nice little advantage as well. And based on the games that we've had, right, we, we've seen probably, I think, what, Three games decided by no more than five eliminations in total. So uh, a, a lot on the line when it comes down to this particular match and a lot on the line when it comes down to every single elimination because of how close, like I said, week number seven has been. Probably the closest week that we've had, and it looks like that's now going to be double digits here for Pond, taking some fall damage and just trying to really re-engage and trying to reevaluate the situation as he'll be back toward the ground floor, decides to build back up and... Thankfully, he has his teammate alongside him, alongside with him. Yeah, that was great teamwork there. To, to uh, he must have got the call out right, build up right over the opponent. His teammate made the call out, comes right over, gets the gets the high ground, lasers him, moves on to the next kill, and then comes there again to help him once you know clean the second kill up. So a lot of great teamwork shown yeah. between this two teams. They utilizing their communication well. They seem to be on the same page, which we talked about earlier. That you know how important it is to, to have for one good pacing and two to have good communication and chemistry with their teammates. So they clearly have that here. And one thing that I love in this particular play as well is that is the definition of, of what Fortnite is right now. Is it will be an 18 to 16 advantage right now for it's way for less Pond. than I thought. Yeah, a lot less than we yeah, than we both definitely thought for for Pond and, F, and FH, but you notice right they're totally in the storm, they're swarmed. Uh you know, for Pond, he was very very far back in that particular zone, but he stays calm, right? Because he can just build that ramp, use that glider redeploy system and easily get back into into safe territory. So, 
very interesting and much different strategies than what we're used to seeing. And those probably weren't players that they would have engaged on or probably would have even found before that ladder redeploy system was even implemented into the game or even when Friday Fortnite was even a thing as well. But uh, moving on, right, you could argue two players up, six total. That's four. Probably a squad around here maybe still surviving. That's gonna be this is gonna be a huge swing right now. If they manage to get these four kills, there's such a big difference between obviously besides the numbers, yeah. such a big difference between going into a game with a two kill lead and a six kill lead. And especially with there being a squad, right? That's mm -hmm. a it's not that's either zero or four for the yeah. most part. Yeah. So it's gonna be a a big difference if this is one squad remaining. As uh they're gonna be decently close to the zone. And obviously you are gonna be as the zones start to uh you know progress, but not and the worst situation is they could be building some tunnels right now, maybe channeling that uh, that regular Fortnite play. They're actually going to use the pyramid and look through it. That actually gives you a, a very nice line sight spawning that someone has glided in. And it might be a solo player, which is the even scarier part, but it's not. The clown coming from the flank looking very, very scary as that was all just a bait, one from the front, and the pinch comes through from the backside. FH, now very low on HP, down to 34, and can he find anything? No, not going to happen. And you notice as that wind comes through, that was a squad, I believe. Or no, was that? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, that was a squad who survived, so yeah. That was a 2v2 situation as well. That was a very difficult team to face off against. Yeah, I mean, like I said, we, we talked about how... how big of a squad kill that would have been, especially coming to the Grand Finals. Now we have Game 2. It's only a two-kill deficit. Yeah, we, we thought they're gonna, We thought once the, the first team got knocked out, we thought that there was going to be a huge deficit coming into Game right. 2. And here we are. Uh, not tie game, but pretty you know, close. Yeah. Uh, well, like I said, 18-16. to 16, like, I, I, I got to say, like to a point... It's not a big deal that there even is an advantage, but there, it is nice to have that, you know, that that, that you know, pat stat, uh, or what am I even saying? That stat padding, uh, you know, to a point. Paul, my words have been all over the place tonight, but regardless, though, I'm really excited to see how this finals breaks down. Like so we've we've seen very very close games up to this point. Uh, I really don't know how to call it, to be honest with you, because I was all about Dr. Dios and Flying Matt coming into not just this series, but to this tournament, because they are defending champions. What can they try to pull off? What can they try to do? Uh, but Ipon and FH, they have made their appearance very known when it comes down to Legion Sunday Showdown, their very first week, and already in the finals, and having an advantage when it comes down to coming into game number two. That's huge for these guys. I, I I would love to see them come back for future weeks. And you asked earlier, you know, what is it like in the grand finals? This is this is it right here. Yeah. And this is a team talking about one team that's been here, one team that hasn't. We have a champion, we have a non-champion. Yeah. Let's see who kind of pulls it out. Are, are the are the defending champs going to come in and show the composure that won them last week? Reclaim their see, title. We're going to see the the new the new young guns. I'm assuming they're young. They're probably not. Might be, <laughs> might be grown man that pays taxes. I don't know. But we're going to see the potential. That money would help with those team. taxes, you know. See, right? It's tax season coming up. But uh, no, we might actually have a, a new champion this week, which would be uh, pretty fitting to how the series has gone so far with a different champion every week. And all eyes are set on Tilted. All four of our players on the minimap are advancing to the exact same location. One that has lost players many, many dollars, but have also won them as well. Looks like player off the start. Going to be a pretty easy elim for Dios. And just like that, we talked about what two elim advantage. That's already cut in half. Not that it was a big split to begin with, but regardless, that six shooter could be coming out. It's a wild west. Ooh, wow. Okay. Cracks him. Okay. He didn't even try to re-engage. He was like, that was pretty cool. Yep. All right, I'm just going to go in and not shoot again to make sure. I'm one for one in that particular spot. But And in Clock Tower, we see a few and really hear a few calls being given as Matt actually in the kill feed does take down one. So just like that, in a matter of moments, two players knocked, and if those players were to get finalized, it's an even one? game. We might see it again. If all four, if all four players survive tilted again, I will be mind blown. We keep seeing. Oh, just we see that another another engagement coming in right here. Seems at the advantage. Oh, wow. Looks like more mini guns. <laughs> the second time that tilted tower, someone's pulled up with a mini gun. She's on tree finally. Go Tetris. And you can see that the players with the miniguns aren't really seeing a whole lot of success. Yeah. That's probably for a, uh, a righteous reason, yeah. as it will be another player taken down, as that's now, I believe, going to be the advantage for Dios and Flying Matt, as they found three straight, I think, for FH and Pawn. I don't believe they've spotted anyone as of now. Unfortunately, we haven't really been able to, uh, to spot their loot or really to see them involved that much. But as I say that, FH knocks out one. Things are becoming Pond. close, and I believe Pawn takes that one back as well. So back and forth we go, but these kills are being stolen by the opposite team. 
Good above ground. Placement puts down the stairs to try to really absorb the shot. It's back and forth traps, we go. Yeah. yeah, back and forth we go. Great stuff here. Coming in from Dios and Flying Matt. They had two opportunities to have players in their line sight. They lose them, but they have a great recovery. Place down those stairs. Don't get too rattled and move on from it. I saw Pond in the kill feed again with a couple more knocks and elims. It's just so hard to, to provide coverage. Yeah, Pond. He's not low at all. I believe now finds another as I uh, hear from production. That's actually eight for them. So they have in this totally alone? skyrocketed. Wow. Yeah, they have skyrocketed. Okay. Yeah, and uh, maybe we're involved in the kill feed more than we thought, or maybe in those last few situations, took down a squad that we didn't realize. That's tilt the towers for you. The, the kills can come that fast. And you hear the callouts coming in, I believe, that is uh, for Dios and Co. saying, hey, we need to go towards shifty. Let's try to make a different play. Let's try to visit a different POI because these guys are seeing a lot more success than we are right now. Let's try to change up the strategy and Shifty's kind of an odd choice and for move that. on. Yeah, I, it I, is. I would think if you know you're down this much, I would say you want to go to where you yeah, think the hot trap's going to be. I think in this case, I would probably go Leaky Lake. Just yeah. assuming there's going to be a lot of players starting there, coming to and from there. It seems to be in the middle of the zone right now. Um, so the Shifty Shafts is a little bit of an interesting... Looks like they might be calling an audible salty. Yeah. Which is mu a much more reasonable, I think, rotation if you're looking for high kills, more population. Yeah. Definitely agree. Shifty shafts. I mean, it's called the shafts for a reason. Like, it, it, there's so much, there's so much underground that it's like you literally have to search throughout the entire thing to even find where players possibly could be. There's so many tunnels, literally, so many uh, random entities that it's, it's hard to really seek out where those players could be. Yeah, they're they're at presidential. But you see the call out. It's one kid. Saying residential one cave. Is there is at least going to be? He said it's you like one, to imagine it's one kid. Is it just one player? Hey, that's what he said. Could be. I think I see one more, so that Flying could be two, out. if not three players around. And yeah, that's going to be it. That one, or I think that player actually was thirsted. Apologies. Thought that uh, was the full. FH got one of them. And FH, yeah, we'll steal that one out from underneath, and that's uh. That's what they got to do at this point. That's interesting that they actually followed them. I mean, if they got an eight, if they came, came into it with two, they got eight kills on the initial at tilted. I think if you follow them around the rest of the game, you're probably going to be fine. At that point, we have, what, 40 players left? They, they came out absolutely swinging. They came in with a lead. Uh, I, you know, no use risking your life trying to you know, maybe get yeah. two v four by a good squad. You you have all the advantage in the world. If anything, you, they need to run away from you. The more time they spend running away from you, the more you know the other players in the map are going to kill each other. I, I think that they just need to, to follow them around coast, and we might be seeing. Uh, once again, a different winner. And God and Pawn, right, for the most part, like, they're trying, they're just kind of letting the opponents find these players yeah. for them. Like, at this moment, God is basically following Matt and Dios and getting them, or really kind of getting to those plays before them. As I say that, though, Dr. Dios could have a huge opportunity to steal this one out. They have to be aggressive. They do. They have, they have no other choice. It's, it's too late in the game. And there's one player who I believe is using balloons, and there is at least two, if not three, players around this area. The knock comes in, and that means that there are still teammates around, probably in retail row. Here in the glider, get deployed. Fires the shots, and could this one land? Yes, nice plays coming through from Dr. Dios. And that's the thing, right? No meds, no shields. And he, has he might have to slow down. A common, a common. He's going to pick up a little more loot now, but he had a shaky kick coming into that. There are bandages on the ground. He's over. Oh, Flying Matt finds that one as well. That's huge for them entering in toward retail because we were talking about how strong of a start FH and Pawn had. And now as Dios and Flying Matt start to progress their way in toward retail row, I think they finish off three out of the four, if not four out of the four. As uh, you could argue, maybe trying to, uh, or maybe could be, starting to get rid of that deficit that they had after Tilted. We're seeing once again the kind of, we'll call it the balloon strat for now until we can think of a better name for it. <laughs> the balloon strat to either either close the ground or if you're, you know, the situation of, of uh, Dr. Dio's team who needs to find the kills, they need you guys have to survey and they have to dive down and rinse and repeat. Time is running out. Starting to diminish. Builds being placed on the top of Dusty Diner. Dio's giving the call outs, trying to let his teammate... Matt know exactly what the case is toward the bottom right of the screen, though we see the quad crasher starting to get involved and in being on that low ground usually is an advantage, but this player happens to be just on second story, taking quite a bit of damage right now as Dio's 15 HP to be exact, going toward the basement and lets the heavy shotgun do its job. No heals. No heals whatsoever. Granted, the weapons are nice, but 
They require you to have somewhat of, a, of an HP, somewhat of health, as he is going to find a few minis off the ground, but that seems to be that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's not ideal right now. Yeah, it's all you because mean. that's going to slow Dios and, mm -hmm. and yeah, Matt down to a point. Every second at this point honestly matters. Yeah. Uh, He's going to leave the minis too? I don't, I don't know about... They're fighting or some shit. I don't know. I, I, I get the idea of keeping up with the balloon. I know we can't really see his full inventory at this point, but I don't know. I, I feel like I would keep the minis just because you're so low on mm -hmm. HP. If you take a shot... I mean, if you don't even have that, I, I don't know. I just feel like it's, it's kind of an awkward spot to, to be in. But regardless, moves forward and continues on that aggression, I think the new place which you got to admire. Yeah, I mean, at this point, they have no other choice, right? You you need to be aggressive no matter what the situation is. Hope You know, he's got, a, like I said, found a chest here. Hopefully he can find some heals in there. More minis. <laughs> well, he likes these ones, though. Yeah, those, these ones are nice. Okay, so there must be something in the water over there. really trying to add up and put together all the possibilities in this game at the time. It looks like waiting for the res. And is he going to leave his teammate? I was going to say for a moment, I thought that maybe the res wasn't coming in. We've spotted an entire gang outside of Dusty Divot. As they've got the quad crashers, they had the uh, the cars hidden from the police. But it looks like we're going to see a full-on attack come through from Pawn and God as they're going to take down at least two, if not the entire squad of four. As this is looking very interesting when we take a look at the, the graph, the storyline of this game. Player with a high ground advantage, it doesn't matter. 13 HP done, but it looks as if that's not going to be the ending result of it. 74 toward the backside as another elimination comes through from Pawn and Co. But they're not stopping as we switch over to Dios and Co. There also is fights going on with FH... And his Le teammate. Really Leaky Lakes, doesn't matter what point in the game it is, there's going to be people coming through that area the entire time. It's brand new, came out today. I think that's where you need to have the bulkier aggression at this point when you're down so much. Oh, the bush the bush I call it the bush I is there another pl There's a player. It's a quad. There was a player with a bush <laughs> on a quad crasher. I will never say that again, Ryan. I will never say that again. Never say never. Well, he didn't play with me in a while. That's true. Never, <laughs> never know what can happen say. in a game of Fortnite. Oh. As just like that, okay, Pawn gets taken down, and God is saying, "Oh my goodness, I cannot allow my teammate to slip because if so, that can ruin the entire game plan." You see, he doesn't even focus on the loot. He focuses on trying to get his teammate up because that is what can get them to winning this tournament. And it looks as if the Reds will be good. They will have it clear. And as I say that, though, take a look at that kill feed. Fly Matt mm -hmm. eliminated someone. They are continuing to find Elims while these players are are starting to slow down here in Dusty Divot. That's smart for them to heal up, though. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Honestly, they, they're, but it they have control. But it causes a delay. No, of course. It, but, but they have all the map control or game control, whatever you want to call it, right? They, yeah. they have the, the lead. They have the control. So for them to, let's say they, they threw their life away because they didn't heal up, right, and they wasted 10 seconds, um, that, would be, that would be detrimental. So I think that's a smart thing to heal. For them, I'm them a heal up, make sure your kit's right, and then just go follow your opponents. There's 16 players left on the map. You're four. There's 12 left on the map. High ground advantage right now for Dios. Trying to write the suppressed assault rifle. Unfortunately, that compact SMG is making his high ground advantage start to deplete. I think has flying Matt at his backside. As they will take both of them down. So responding back and forth. And unfortunately for God and Co., you're the best. They okay. that player actually takes no. the glider no, over to them. They tried to thirst the kill too from above yeah. and didn't get it. But that's so Let's fortunate go. for for Dios and Co because they had that player go toward their side rather than the opponents. It's RNG at its finest. Regardless though, the balloons are brought up and the shots are starting to come in and as FG start to kind of form a little bit of a fortress, the balloons are coming in as well. However, as I say that. It will be Pawn to the top side of the mountain fighting for these kills. And they say, hey, Granite, we got it. this is the kills that we have to do. We have to fight in the storm. It's worth it. These e limbs are like gold. That might have made it mathematically. They might have known that made it mathematically impossible if they secure those two kills. That could have been yeah. why because the zone isn't friendly this late in the game. Yeah, they're, they're on our, your huge God ramp Definitely is not. We see a very high up ramp in Leaky Lake. And Dr. Dios and Fly Matt could be feeling the pressure. A player got knocked by a fall, too, which means that neither team can uh, pick that up, which is kind of unfortunate. Did he actually fall? Someone's yeah, get here. I got, I got a kid on me. Come in here, come in here. Leaky Lake again. Yeah, that's fucking 
They can get the knock. That's big. Obviously a much <laughs> a little bit different when we say it compared yeah. to them, but I believe a trap oh. from the opposite team. I think he thought it was his for a time because he looked at it for such a long time. Dios gets taken down. Flying Matt got, is still alive. He got styled on. And Tragic. thankfully for Flying Matt, he can get the res off, but to no avail. Both teams Wait. taking a little bit of a break, taking a little bit of a rest. 18, 18, 19, 20, 21. As they're adding it up in their heads right now, let's listen. Yeah, let's go. I have no, I have no fucking balloons. I believe it's still possible. They they sound urgent still. They don't sound defeated. Yeah. I can't even, I can't even take another mini. This is a joke. Sounds like it is still a possibility for Dios and Matt to walk away with this game, and they've just spotted someone, a cowgirl, just outside of factories. It looks like they will take down one and still looking on toward the next. It looks like FH walks away with two huge fights toward the end. And I believe with those two fights, that might have done it for this game, Ryan. I think it might be Degat and Pawn. It was 22. Pawn and, and God had a two Elam advantage coming into this game. I think they won by one then. Oh we, have, we have production adding up my. what it is, but I think that it might have once again. We don't again, even know who won. It we might don't have even once know. again came down to one kill. We have been seeing some of the closest <sighs> matches that I've ever personally casted. Chat, who won? <laughs> I don't even know. Mathematicians. I don't even know what happened. Help us. I, I honestly I don't know who won. We're, we're adding it up right now to figure out whether or not Dios and Fly Matt are defending champions, or did Pawn and God literally win by one Elim? Did they win by one soul kill? People are saying, is it a tie? Who knows? We don't even know. No clue. Get your Casio oh out, God. Ryan. That was a high-scoring game across the board. I'm too. getting my phone out. i got to add it on my calculator here. I think one player had like 15 or more, another player like 13 or more. There was a little 7-5 somewhere in there. Oh, holy moly. I don't know. Who do you think? Who do you think walked away with I, it? I think that Pawn I think and so FH too. had it. I'm not positive. But I think We they thought it. they won it by one. We're trying to add just to be safe. And uh, the best answer of the entire day, Wade Raid 723 says, we are all winners. That is true. We're I like all that. winners. I we like got to, We got to watch this game. Hey, we're all winners in that instance. But my goodness, man. This is intense. I I, th I think Pawn and Ooh. God win this. I think so too. But that what a huge elim at the end from FH. I think he took down two players, if not took down one in uh, in the limit and fully mm -hmm. elimed the other. But you talked about it, right? Leaky, right? Going toward that particular point of the map, it is full of players all the time. Always. And, and we were constantly seeing them kind of go around different locations, but it all came down to being inside of that new location, which happened to be you know put into the game today. So. Yeah, imagine if you're a new player who didn't get to see the event, right? And you're like, oh, this is a new part of the map. I'm going to go check this out. Or you, yeah. you happen to come across it. Like, Okay, so we just got word that Dios' team had 38 <laughs> kills. This is so intense. Oh, my god. Yeah, sorry. I paused like, I paused mid-sentence mid, mid there, but we, were, we got production you know, tallying up the scores for us, and we're, we're super excited to see. It, it was what, production? It was 40 to 38, In favor meaning of that Pawn? Pawn and God Ooh. are week seven champions. I curse them again. They tied <laughs> in game two because they had a two elimination right. game coming in from that game number one. We talked about it. Normally, one, two, three, four eliminations, it doesn't really mean a whole lot. Right. In week seven, that is huge because of how close all of our games were. That was unbelievable. Believable. You got to give a GG's to both of our teams, right? For sure. Obviously, Pond and God are our Week Seven champions, and you got to give them all the credit in the world. But you have to give quite a bit of that credit to Dios and Flying Matt, right? They are they were technically defending champions from Week Six. They're in back-to-back -back grand finals, and they have one heck of a showing. But to no avail. We do have new champions after seven weeks, Ryan. No repeats. That's incredible. That's crazy. And it's it's so cool to see again once again players coming from the qualifiers yeah. are winning. That that's you would have never told me if I saw this in the beginning, right? And saw all the pro players involved, all the top players, streamers. Uh, you know, we've seen their skill on display for months and months and months, right? If you were to tell me that, like, yeah, they're not going to win that much, yeah, I would have been like, yeah, you're crazy. Like these are some of the best players in the world, but no, some of the best players in the world are, are, are hidden, right? We don't even know they exist yet, and they're starting to come out and starting to show us who they are. Uh, and, and hopefully we see another new winner next week, right? I, yeah. I want I want to see more and more winners come from the qualifiers. I want to see more new talent come up. I think that's always so cool to see the new wave of players show themselves. Everyone loves a good upset, right? So I just looking forward to seeing the next weeks. Absolutely, man. If you guys haven't done so already, like we talked about countlessly throughout this entire thing, 
feel free to use exclamation point qualifier or qualify in the chat. You guys can have the opportunity to see how you can play in these tournaments. It's free. We have two of them a week, and the top two from each of those tournaments, which means four, get added into each week of the Legion Sunday Showdown, of course, powered by Lenovo Legion. But like we discussed as well, if you're not a player, maybe you're a guy who likes to watch these games, much like myself, who doesn't currently possess skill. I like to make fantasy brackets. The way that I do that is by using exclamation point FB as well in the chat, which will greet you with the link so you guys can create your fantasy brackets for week number and those, of course, come with cash and prizes as well. So make sure to do either of those things, even if you want to make a bracket and even be in the tournament. That happens. I know at least um, normally uh, a lot of our players who are in the tournament usually make fantasy brackets as well. Just, you know, hey, <laughs> they can get cash as well from either of those things. An extra, you know, $50, $75 doesn't hurt by any means. And uh, it's always fun to look at their fantasy brackets because I've seen – actually, I noticed there was one tournament. I don't remember who it was. It was a random qualifier team. Uh, whenever they made their fantasy bracket, they didn't have them winning. And I was like, really? <laughs> like, you're not even going to predict yourself to win the entire thing? They're, but, hedging, uh, they're hedging their bet. <laughs> they are. They're like, okay, i got to win somehow, yep. whether or not uh, it ends up being that major cash prize. But my goodness, man, what a, what a tournament we've had. We've had some amazing weeks, but we have not seen a week as close as, as, as this one here in Week 7. No, that was incredible. Like I said, I, I've, I've done some of these tournaments with you before. I've done Friday Fortnite, and you, yeah. you're always, you're always going to have some blowouts, right? There's always time where someone dies early and someone mounts a huge lead, or some team goes on a tear and some team right. lands where there's no one. Literally, we had teams from across the board, start to finish, staying alive the whole time, getting kills the whole time. Every single game was close. There was at no point where it's like, oh, well, they're running away with it, right? Yeah. We had close matches the entire time, and so... This was this was a great night of Fortnite. It was, man. It was uh, an incredible tournament from start to finish. We'll obviously have the placements up here just uh, in a moment, but that also gives me time to talk about uh, one thing that's actually going on with Lenovo Legion. They're actually going to be hosting what is known as the Legion Battle Royale Boot Camp. If you guys are interested, you can feel free to use exclamation point boot camp in the chat right now, which will get you guys with a link, which will uh, which will show you a few different opportunities how you could be entered. What what's on the line though? What does it really? What does it kind of come through for me? Well, essentially, it's an intensive two day game gaming clinic at the Summit House in Southern Los Angeles, you and your teammate will level up your Fortnite teamwork through a weekend of challenges and training sessions with the help of competitive talent and coaches at Lenovo Legion PC Gaming and with rather Lenovo Legion PC Gaming Hardware. Of course, to enter, you send us, you send a clip of your duo in action and a short video explaining why you and your partner are ready for the boot camp. Travel, food, and lodging will be included in those travel dates are November 30th through December third so make sure guys if you haven't done so already check out the boot camp legion's putting it on it's going to be an amazing location and also you're increasing your fortnite skills while also having everything paid for so why wouldn't you want to do it i'm not gonna lie i might try to enter it because i could definitely use all the help i can get with my fortnite skill ryan yeah i wouldn't mind some uh, some some nice coaching <laughs> so to speak that would be um, yeah. Yeah. never knew who could camp. be there you know you yeah have, no. uh, some of the best fortnite players in the world teaching you how to increase your increase your gun skill increase your builds etc I, so. I think it's so cool too to, to, to see how much opportunity is being created through through programs like this for for upcoming players yeah. to like again once again to find the next the next big thing right mm -hmm. they're, he, they're out there somewhere and these are tournaments like this things like the boot camps are great opportunities for for players to really show their skills show who they are get better right but obviously you go to websites like umggaming.com right you can literally play at any level you want it, it maybe you watch this tournament and you like that format you want to see hey i wonder how i do on a kill race format right go to the website you can even sign up for free matches they don't need to be tournaments they you can right. you can have free matches you can have cash out matches let's say you only want to play for a dollar right whatever level you think you're at or whatever level you want to try to play at and get better there's something for you on the website and that's what makes it so much fun Absolutely. Well, guys, let's go ahead and pop up the uh, final placements here for week number seven to see exactly how everything lined out going from the uh, lower portion to the higher. We see in fifth through eighth, XXIF and Fun PS joined alongside of Sachi and Nick, Megalo and Ice C, who are obviously playing from uh, you know one of our interesting locations throughout this week, the, the Caesars boys, right? Uh, we also had Jordberry and Gaffo finish in fifth through eighth. Just above them in our top four position, we saw $1,000 get awarded to Shaq and Static Illusion, along with Voxy and Sea Dark. In our runner-up position, only falling by two eliminations and being in back-to-back -back grand finals, a huge congratulations to Dr. Dios and Fly Matt for finishing in a respectable runners-up position. And in first, our Week 7 champions awarded $5,000. iPod and F.H. God are your champions crazy stuff to see the scenes are unreal and ryan what a tournament we had any closing thoughts from yourself as week seven comes to a close 
you know, I'm just happy to happy to finally cast Fortnite again. It's been a while. Uh, thank you so much to the competitors. Thank you so much to the viewers for watching the, all the, all the action. This was yeah. so much fun to watch. I mean, we had some of the most close games I've ever seen in my personal little, you know short Fortnite casting career. So just you know, super happy to be here. Had a lot of fun with you, and looking forward to watching next week. Absolutely, man. Week eight is set up to be a fun one to watch. Of course, we want to give a, a last second thank you to Lenovo Legion. We also want to thank you guys as well for watching throughout week number seven. We've had an amazing, uh, you know, tournament each and every week here for the Legion Sunday Show, and it's been, it's been a blast. But we also, of course, along with you guys, want to give a massive thank you to Lenovo Legion because, of course, without them, none of this would be possible. If you're interested in upgrading your gaming lifestyle, don't forget to check out the exclamation point Legion links in chat and as well as the channel description where you guys can visit and have the opportunity some, some for some very cool offers going on right now for people with all kinds of different budgets. But of course, that'll do it for myself and Ryan for week number seven. On behalf of everyone here at UMG, along with production, we want to thank you so much for watching week number seven, and we'll see you for week number eight here next Sunday for the Legion Sunday Showdown, powered by Lenovo Legion. Have a great week.